So for both of the um, titrations we've done so far, you have strong acid and a weak acid. You're titrating in them, both of them with strong bases. Let's do a third one. What do you think will go in the beaker now? What are the other choices? Yeah, why don't we try a weak base now? So we're going to try a weak base. So for the weak basis, we are going to look at our appendix D. In the appendix D, the bases are here. So, of course, we are not going to pick something with a hydroxide. That would be a strong base. So a weak base would be something with nitrogen. So here are some common bases, weak bases. They all have nitrogen. The lone pairs will accept the proton there to become NH4+. So let's pick the easiest one, NH3. The Kb for that one is 1.8 E negative 5. Okay? So in our beaker, we have some NH3. We do not know how many there are. So we want to find out. What do you think we should add to it? Okay, well, that's a base, so we should add an acid. Okay, obviously. Okay, and if you were to choose an acid, would you pick a weak acid or a strong acid? Of course, you would pick a strong acid. You have seven strong acids. Let's pick the easiest one, hydrochloric acid. You should know the molarity of that acid. Let's say we're using a 0.1 molar. This one, you don't know the molarity. So let's use H plus to add into our base. So let's figure out our starting pH, add some acid, see what happens in the end. Go ahead and try that yourself. In your, um, in your, in your pH curve, try to get the pH in the buffer region and then try to see what the pH is at equivalence point if it's above 7 or below 7. Okay, pause the video and try that yourself. So in the beginning, when I've added 0 milliliters of NaOH, so I'm using, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm using acid here. So I'm going to put this millimeters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, and this is the pH. So in the beginning, when all there is in there is the base, what do you think my pH will be? Is it going to be high or low? Of course, it's going to be high. It's a base, so it's going to be around, let's say, 12 because it's not a strong base. Okay, so that's the first spot. Let's just use blue. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Pink is fine. Okay. Then, so this is pH 12.0, let's say. Okay, because all there is is, in this, is the NH3. Now we're going to add some OH minus. I mean, I'm sorry, some H plus. Okay, if you have added 5 milliliters, that's half of 10, you would have titrated um, half of them. So this will be gone, and you would have made NH4+, plus, right? Because H plus plus NH3 is NH4+. Plus. So what you have in there is a conjugate acid and its conjugate base pair. So the pH will come from Henderson-Hasselbalch. So pH is going to be equal to pKa plus log ba. Okay, these two will be equal, so this term will go to zero. So pH will be pKa, which is the log of 1.8 E negative 5, which is, let me calculate that, 1.8 E, 1.8 E, 1.8 E negative 5, log of that, 4.74. It just happens to be the same as acetic acid. That's weird, right? Okay, that's just plain coincidence. So this will be 4.74. Okay, so... So when I try to plot 4.74, it doesn't make sense. It should be higher than 7, right? So this is not pH. This is not pKa. This is pKb. Oh, my goodness. So that's pKb. So I have to subtract that from 14. So it's 14 minus 4.74. 4 
pKa is 9.26, which makes more sense. So here, it should be 1pKa so it should be 9.26 which makes better sense because it was at 12 and then it goes down a little bit to 9 around here around here something like that okay um, again this is going to be the buffer area buffer region let's go to equivalence point here I hope that when you did this yourself you would have added two H pluses this time so you have this and this, and this is gone. So now what you have left is NH4 plus in the beaker. I hope that you realize that NH4 plus is not going to be neutral. By the way, this is called the equivalence point. Equivalence point is when you have moles of added acid equals moles of added base. At equivalence point, the NH4 plus that you produce is going to hydrolyze, causing the H plus will go here, making H3O plus or H plus and NH3, which will make your solution slightly acidic. So instead of being pH 7 at equivalence point, it'll be a little bit more acidic, let's say 6.5. I'm making that up, just below anything below 7. So at pH 10, oh my goodness, I'm going to be over here. Six point, this is going to be seven around here. Okay. <clears throat> then I'm going to keep going over here. When I've added <clears throat> a lot of H pluses, I have now overdone it. Cross these out, and now you're going to have cross these out, and now you're going to have a whole bunch of H pluses. So it's just going to be acidic. Whatever the molarity of um, 0.1 molar HCl is what you're going to end up being. So 0.1 is 1 E negative 1, so pH of around 1 or 2, something like that. So it's going to be down here. So it'll eventually get there, but, you know, it's a curve. So this is going to be your pH curve looking like this. So it should be around, it should be flat over here. So something flat. And then when it goes to the equivalence point, it's going to go down. Oh, this is not good. It looks messy here. And it's going to go across and eventually plateau out. Okay. If I were to draw that a little bit better, let me just do a yellow maybe. Highlight it. Something like that. No, it's hard to see. Just kind of show it a little bit. So this is what your titration curve should look like. Okay, again, this area is called the buffer region. The buffer region is normally at the pH of the pKa, which is 9.26. And the buffer region is 9.26 plus or minus 1 pH. Okay, so here, if it were at 4.74, it'll be the buffer region is going to be 4.74 plus or minus 1 pH. And the same here. Oh, there's no buffer region here because you have strong, both strong. Okay, so that's it. Let's go ahead and summarize what we just did. So this is titration, ladies and gentlemen. We vary the amount of the unknowns here. We keep adding something strong. This can be strong or weak down here, the analyte. Analyte. This is a titrant. For our titrants, we've been using 0.1 molar of anything. Whatever it is, you should know it. Okay? We put an indicator in there. This is the molecule for the phenolphthalein indicator. When the H is there, it looks clear. When you put a base... The OH minus extracts the H plus, causing a change of electrons, and this turns pink. So when it's basic, the phenolphthalein will turn pink. Okay, and that happens around pH eight. We did a few curves. Um, the first one, are they're both strong, so you had an acid, it's low pH, and then you kept adding the base, and it becomes high pH. 
And this area right here is, um, oh, actually, this is the equivalence point. Okay, um, the equivalence point where the add, added base and acid are equal. And then this region should be where your endpoint is. The endpoint is where the indicator changes color. For phenolphthalein, is 8.5. Your indicator should change color anywhere in this area where there's a steep rise. <clears throat> Okay, so when you have a weak, something weak, you have a buffer region, and the pKa of the buffer region is going to be pK, I mean the pH of the buffer region is pKa plus or minus 1. And again, the equivalence point is a little bit higher when you have a weak acid because the conjugate base hydrolyzes. Okay, here you have the, starts basic, it's a weak base, and then you add acid so it goes down. So this one's going up. This one's going down. The buffer region is here. That's the pKa um, A of the base. Remember, you had to do 14 minus pKb from the chart like we did. <laughs> that was an error. Um, and that's it. That summarizes your titration.